Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. Now that we've completed the basic assembly of our crankshaft, we're going to turn our attention back to our engine case. Here's our engine case, uh, back from the paint shop as it were. And we're going to go ahead and separate the two halves, which should pop apart without too much trouble. There she goes. Just lay it on its side gently. We'll lift this half off. We'll set that half down and set it aside for the moment. And we're going to work on this half of the engine case for now. You will find that um, some builders will use some sort of an engine stand. Uh, they make uh, Volkswagen engine stands that you can bolt to a workbench. Uh, there's some freestanding ones you can get. Uh, if you're going to do a lot of Volkswagen engines, it might uh, pay to have that type of a, a fixture. Uh, what we do even right here is we just generally uh, put the thing on a 4x4 uh, four four block on one side and a 2x4 block on the other. Sets it right on our bench in front of us, makes it real easy to handle. We can move it around as we need to and uh, it works out pretty well. So uh, each uh, mechanic is going to set that up a little differently for themselves, but uh, you can uh, make your own choice on that. So the first thing we do is we're going to install our oil control uh, plungers. There are two on the uh, Volkswagen engine. The front one, closer to our prop hub, will be uh, the uh, high pressure relief. Uh, what that'll come into play on is uh, when you're uh, first starting your engine and your oil is very thick, and especially if it's cold, uh, your oil pressure will be relatively high. That will open and allow some of that oil to uh, feed back into the uh, sump, and then that'll uh, prevent oil from going through your oil cooler until the oil warms up a little bit more. The oil pressure relief valve in the back is actually your pressure control valve and that's the one that controls the overall oil pressure of the engine. Uh, typically you don't need to make any adjustments on those but on some engines uh, sometimes you need to add a washer underneath to pop your oil pressure up just a little bit. Uh, commonly not a problem. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to start out here. This is our first uh, oil control valve. You'll notice that it has a a little uh, groove in it around the side. It looks a little bit like a, uh, a mushroom there on the top. This is the forward oil control valve. That's your uh, high pressure relief valve. That goes in the forward uh, uh, passage, which I'll show you here in just a second. We'll turn our engine towards the camera here so you can see what we're doing. And you'll see here on the, the forward end, this is the uh, prop hub end of the engine up here. We'll call that the forward end uh, on all of our operations. The back end is the flywheel end, uh, which in a the, in the motor vehicle would attach to the transmission, but uh, on our uh, application, that's the motor mount end or the back of the engine. So this uh, port right down here at the bottom is your forward oil control uh, plunger location. What we're gonna do is just gonna take a quick look in there, make sure there's no debris or any uh, uh, foreign matter, it looks good. We're going to take just a little bit of motor oil on our finger. This is just our standard motor oil that we're using uh, that will actually run in the engine. Uh, we use Valvoline VR1. There's other motor oils in our manual that are approved for the uh, Aero-V engine, but this is the one we uh, use here in the shop. I'm going to just get just a little bit of that on my finger and get it all lubed on that uh, oil plunger there, get that lubed up good. And once that's lubed up good, we're going to just, the uh, little T part or the mushroom part, if you will, the closed end is going to go towards the uh, engine, uh, up if you will. We'll go ahead and sl it'll just slide right down in there. We follow the plunger up with our spring. 
You'll see here that we have two different lengths of spring. Uh, the longer spring is the one we're going to use in the forward plunger that we just installed. The shorter spring is for the rear plunger that we'll install in a minute. And then we have the two uh, caps that go on there. Each of those are identical, so they're, they're interchangeable. So I'm going to grab my spring, feed it in there uh, on top of that plunger. It just butts up against that plunger in there. It sticks out quite a ways. And uh, then we're going to take our plug and we'll thread the plug in there. All right, we've got our spring in, uh, seated against our plunger in our uh, orifice there. Here's our plug. We have our flat gasket on the plug. The trick here is to force the spring down and get a couple of threads started on the plug so that you can then put your wrench on and tighten the plug down. There's quite a bit of tension on the spring, so it takes a little bit of push. This may be a place where you might want to have an extra set of hands to hold on to things so that uh, the engine doesn't get away on you as you force the plug in there. All right, there we've got our thread started. Put our wrench on there. Tighten that down. And there's our uh, overpressure control valve installed. Now we'll grab our pressure control valve here, which is the uh, just straight cylindrical uh, plunger. Again, the closed end or the flat end is going to go up towards the engine. Gonna get a little oil on my finger and lube that up. Nice coating of lubrication. Now this one goes in the rear port, which is back here on the flywheel end of the engine. And again, closed end goes up towards the engine and it should slide right in. There we go. Got it in there. We'll grab our short spring and our cap. The short spring is going to be the one for this plunger. Slide it in and then we'll put our cap on. thread started and we'll use our wrench to snug it down. There, our oil control valves are installed. All right, next we're going to set our engine up on our blocks, get nice and sturdy. And our next step is going to be to install our rubber O-rings on our main engine studs. Each of these engine studs, you'll see it has a chamfered uh, little receptacle at the bottom of the stud there, which is where our uh, O-ring is going to seat. And so there's six of those. You just slide them down, seat them in the O-ring uh, recess there. There, our O-rings are in. While we're there, we can also install our dowel pins for our main bearings. Those just seat in the little holes there. They just slide right in. Nothing to it. You don't have to force them. They just drop in. There's three of them on this side. Got 
actually four on this side because we have the small one for the front bearing here as well. So now our dowel pins are in. Next we're going to install our cam bearings in this half of the engine case. We have the cam bearing set laid out over here. Uh, you'll see there's three different bearings uh, each half here. There's a narrow bearing, which is the rearmost bearing on the flywheel end. There's a wider bearing, which is the center bearing, and then there's this bearing with a flange on it is actually a thrust bearing, and that goes in the forward uh, end of the case nearest the prop hub. Uh, on the bearing, uh, on each bearing, you'll find a little uh, index notch there. Uh, you remember when we put our uh, bearings in our connecting rods, those had the same type of an index notch to keep the bearing uh, properly positioned in the engine. Uh, you'll notice that each bearing has one of those, except for this one. This half of the thrust bearing, we've actually filed off that index notch. When Volkswagen builds these engines in an automotive uh, installation, they actually only use half of this thrust bearing. They just put a half a bearing in there because all the thrust is to the one side as the cam turns. So they uh, save themselves some time and effort by only putting half a bearing in. We like to put a full bearing in, but the engine case is not machined for that index notch on the half that Volkswagen doesn't put the bearing in. So we have to actually remove that index notch so that that bearing will fit in the case for us on our uh, uh, half a case. So we'll go ahead and put those in now. Here's your, your rearmost bearing again is the narrow one. That goes back here towards the flywheel end of the engine. Put our notch in and they just sit down in there. We'll use our plastic hammer just to align it a little bit. And there's that bearing. Our center bearing is our wider uh, bearing without the flange. Again, we'll press it down in place. Give just a little tap with the plastic hammer there. Get that seated in there. There we go. And then our forward bearing is our thrust bearing. And again, this half of the engine case does not have a, an index notch in it for the bearing. So we'll, we've ground that notch off of there and we're going to seat that bearing down in there. This one takes a little bit more effort because of the flanges. They kind of grip the engine case fairly tight. So we'll just give that a little tap on each side. Get her seated right down in there. Nice and flush. There's our cam bearings. Our cam bearings are in. While we're working on the cam bearings, we're going to also test fit our lifters. These are our, uh, some people call them tappets. Some people call them cam followers. Uh, some people call them lifters. They are, uh, this flat mushroom surface is the actual surface that contacts the camshaft lobes that will operate your valves. So what we're going to do is we're just going to slide them down in the case dry of lubricant. They so just make sure that they're nice and free and uh, they slide in there without any resistance or any uh, uh, undue effort. And these drop right in, no problem. So we know those are, uh, those are good. So I'm going to pull those back out and uh, we will lubricate those up in just a minute and put them in when we're ready to uh, assemble our engine case halves. Now we're going to turn our attention to the other half of the engine case. Uh, this one you'll notice doesn't have the uh, long uh, mounting studs. It does have the chamfers for the O-rings, which is the other half of the O-ring. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our uh, dowel pin in for the uh, center main bearing because that's a split bearing on the crankshaft. Just drop that in there. Got that. And then we're going to put our cam bearings in. And again, the same, uh, same order applies. The narrow bearing uh, goes in the rear towards the flywheel, and it has the little index notch there. Lines up with the engine case. Just a little tap to get it seated. The wider Plain bearing without the flange goes in the center location. Get that lined up with its index notch. A little tap with the, with the hammer there, make sure that's nice and flush. There we go. And then the thrust bearing, again, this side does have the index notch, and that'll uh, interface with the notch in the case there. And they fit a little tight, as I mentioned before. Get it started in there and give it just a little tap of that plastic hammer nice and flush our cam bearings are in while we're here we can also test fit our lifters make sure that they slide in nice and free
and we see that they do no problem there so we got that all set and we'll pull those out momentarily here and then we'll reinstall those when we're ready to put our engine case halves together.